Hi, Mark here from Lydian Stream. So, how do you know when your mix is done? It's cooked, ready to go, send off to the guy who's going to master it, or the girl, of course, who's going to go and master it. I've been producing and recording, mixing albums for close on 30 years now, and I want to lay out a few technical points, basic points, which I think can be really helpful, and then really to me what I'm passionate about as well, the emotional side of knowing when your mix is done, because that seems to mess people up more than anything. So here we go. A couple of days ago, my daughter came to me. She's a young and really fine producer. And she said to me, Dad, you know, I do this mixing and I'm never really secure that the mix is done. How do I know when the mix is done? The first thing you need to recognize is not to let your mix sink. And I don't mean a bathroom sink or a kitchen sink. I mean like sink on the main meter where you have your dB level. Your mix should always be pushing around zero dB. How do we do that? First of all, you check your low end, the bass, the kick drum, bass synths, anything pumping out energy in the low end is the first place you need to deal with because that's where most of the energy is. There's masses of energy in the low end and because we don't hear it as well as the high end, we have to pump up the volume to hear it. Then we start getting overblown in the meters. So what you need to do is really simple. Solo the kick drum, check what level it is on the master meter. It should be just, if this is zero dB, just a little lower than zero dB, leaving room for more space. Then you do the same thing with the bass, also down here. Together they're creating more energy, so they're gonna be pushing. So then you measure them out together. Then if you have anything else in the low end, floor tom toms, bass synths, anything like that, you bring them all in and you check that together you get the balance you like between them and they're a little bit below zero dB. You need that extra room. We call it headroom. Why? Because now you're going to fill in the mid range and the high range. That's much less energy, but it's going to fill up the space. And then of course you need to leave room so you can have the vocals over the top and hear them clearly. So start with your low end, get it a level that seems nice and sounds nice, balanced out the way you want. Bring in the mid range, bring in the high end, check you're moving on zero dB or just below it, then you're ready to go, your mix won't sink, and that way you've left plenty of room when you send it off for mastering to pump it up to make it all loud and you know, like we love to have it today so you can play it in the club and blow everybody out of the room. So that's tip number one. Do not let you sink your mix. Do <laughs> tip number two. By the time you get to the mix, your editing should be done. I mean, moving stuff around, what goes where, what track I'm using, which take I like best. That's done. Don't even start mixing until you get there. Of course, we do some stuff in real time because on computer technology, we can do that and we can have automation and remember it. But don't get deep into mixing before the edit is done. When you finish the song and you feel good about it, then you start dealing with the mix. How do we do this? You need to go track by track by track and all the way from the beginning of the track to the end of the track. So you open up the kick drum, you go all the way through, you get the level you want it to be creatively. Use your ears, trust your ears. Remember what we said before about the mix syncing. So that's one of the things you're following all the time. But then you go across and you balance it the way you want. If you don't go from the beginning to end of each track, you'll end up with lots of little mini mixes. You'll work on the A section of the song that will sound great. You'll get to the B section. It won't make any sense. This will save you hours. It will give you continuity. There will be a sense of flow in the song. There will be a sense of cohesiveness. Everything will be tied in with itself. It will become one piece. This is what you're mixing for. You'll go backwards and forwards lots of times. And sometimes you'll go into little bits. Once you've got the whole mix, you'll upgrade stuff here and there. That's why I don't record too many tracks. You end up with a hundred tracks. You're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? So. That's tip number two. Tip number three, option anxiety. Do, 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 do. There are so many options and possibilities for using effects on our DAWs, on our sequencers, that it can be quite overwhelming. Just to backtrack about 20 years, when we had these massive great recording tables, we didn't have a reverb on each channel. If I had a 40 channel mixer, I did not have 40 reverbs sitting in my studio that I could plug each one into every channel. It doesn't make sense. Even more than that, think about it. If you go into a hall, there's only one reverb in the hall. There's not like in this corner one reverb and in another corner another reverb. Yeah, if you go into the loo, it's a different reverb. 
that's a different room. So yes, of course, guitar players, they have reverb built into their amplifiers and they'll turn it on and they'll use it in live situations. And we can use more than one reverb in a mix, but keep it minimal. You know, more than three reverbs, your mix is gonna get foggy. It's gonna sound, it's just not gonna sound. There's special effects we use to create a certain ambient vibe. I'm not talking about that. You want to do some weird thing on the voice or distortion on something else. I'm talking about your major effects, your reverbs and your delays. Really the only channels that we use individually time after time is for compression and EQ. Each channel needs its own compression, its own EQ. But when it comes to reverbs, when it comes to delays, keep it simple. There will be clarity in your mix. Keep it simple. Tip number four, and the last in this series of technical tips before we move on to the emotional side of making music. Referencing your track opposite another piece of music that represents something close to what you're trying to do in your own mix. I can't emphasize enough. Have something else that you can listen to in real time as you're doing your mix. In today's world, we're working a lot from home studios. The acoustics aren't great. The low end is gonna be very incorrect many of the times, and the way you can correct that is by having a reference and checking that you're more or less in the same space sonically on both tracks. Okay, so that's tip number four. I hope they all help. Coming back to our main question, how do we know when a mix is done? It's cooked, it's ready to send off for mastering. You feel good about it. It's really not easy sometimes because it's about emotional feelings. It's about confidence. It's about, am I good enough to be doing this? Oh my goodness, on YouTube they say this. Oh my goodness, this famous musician I met over there says this. Oh my goodness, my friends in the band are saying, no, we should do it like this. This shakes our confidence. As a musician, the most important thing is to find your own voice and have faith in your own voice and trust what you're doing. Of course, at the same time, in order to achieve these goals, you're working on your musicianship. You're improving yourselves as professional musicians. But from the beginning, you have to trust yourself. So the four points I gave you before, technical points, they're kind of like my Bible. They're fundamental. And what that's done for me over the years is it's given me a sense of confidence that I've done the footwork, I've done the basic work on the mix that I know I need to do in order to give quality and, and, and to give focus on what's important to me in the mix. I have found those little things, but now I have to trust myself. I have to sit back and say, okay, yeah, there are people who have been doing it longer than me. Yeah, there are people who have certain techniques. I don't even understand what they mean. That's all fine. In the end, like everything we do in life, especially as musicians, you've got to trust your own voice. I really hope this all helps. Love your mixing, only good stuff, and let the music lead. Everybody says it's just in your mind. Everybody says it's all gonna be fine. Everybody says don't pay the food. Everybody says... Thank you.